years ago, a woman came to see me in my clinic. She was 34 years old. She was a secretary. And she'd originally come to the UK from Nigeria. I shall call her Margaret. That morning in my clinic, Margaret sat beside me and said, God will cure me. And she refused to take the treatment that I offered her. God will cure me. Six months earlier, Margaret had been diagnosed with HIV. And I'd been trying for several months to, to persuade her to come back to clinic after her diagnosis. That day, she'd finally agreed to come back and talk to me. Margaret had had HIV for a long time before she was diagnosed, so she was already very unwell. She had a serious skin infection, was constantly tired, with no energy to do anything. But she'd come back that day to tell me that she didn't believe in the treatment that I was offering her, and that there was nothing I could do to change her mind. I rang her, I wrote to her, I begged her to come back to take treatment. I offered her the opportunity to speak to other people who'd been in a similar situation to her, but nothing worked. A year later, she was ad admitted to hospital unconscious with a serious brain infection. She never woke up. As I watched her lying unresponsive in her hospital bed, hooked up to tubes and machines, I was overwhelmed by thoughts of how unnecessary her death had been. My talk is for all women, but also for the men in this room. Men who have wives, girlfriends, sisters, aunts, mothers, and other women they care about. Because Margaret could have been any one of those women. As I look around, I think that I can safely assume that most of you are adults and will have had sex. The subject of sex will be hard for some of you to talk about and easier for others. But today, no matter how you feel about talking openly about sex, I'd like you to think about it for a moment. And I'd like you to think about the last time you had sex. Maybe this morning. I'd like you to think about whether it felt good whether you felt pressured, whether you were worried that you might catch something, and whether you used a condom. But I'd also like you to ask yourself one question. Am I sure that I am my husband or boyfriend's only partner? Now, going back to the sex thing, hopefully, if you needed to, You'll have used a condom to prevent an unplanned pregnancy or to reduce your risk of catching an infection like HIV. And you'll also know that condoms have been the mainstay of HIV prevention for many decades. Globally, HIV infections in children are going down because women with HIV are treated in pregnancy to stop infections in their babies. But in adults, despite huge improvements in access to treatment, there's been virtually no change in the number of people catching HIV. So now for some HIV stats. Worldwide, 5,000 people a day catch HIV, and 52% of those are women. Nigeria has 3.2 million people living with HIV, the second highest country in the world after South Africa. In the UK, 31% of people with HIV are women, and 14 people catch HIV a day, two to three of whom are African. Africans in the UK are more likely to be diagnosed with advanced HIV because they don't test regularly or at all, and this means that by the time they're diagnosed, their immune systems are already badly damaged. And this is what happened to Margaret. But despite that, if she'd accepted treatment, she almost certainly wouldn't have died. One thing I learned from conversations with Margaret is that she didn't feel that there was anything she could have done to stop herself from catching HIV. So let's explore this further and go back to condoms. It's true that they definitely work if you use them, 
But not everybody can use a condom all of the time. And anyway, how many of you have ever tried to force a man to use a condom if he didn't want to? The thing about condoms is that they take control away from the very people who are most affected. Women. Many women have shared that they don't feel able to tell a partner to use a condom or to refuse to have sex with him if he won't use one. So even if they worry that he has another partner, they cross their fingers and hope for the best. But what if I told you that HIV infections in some people are falling? Last year, something happened that I never thought I'd see as an HIV consultant working in London. The numbers of cases of HIV in my clinic fell. They fell. My clinic diagnoses the highest number of people with HIV in the country. And until 2015, we were diagnosing between 50 and 70 patients a month with HIV. But since June 2015, the numbers of cases of HIV have been falling. And in December 2016, we diagnosed 22 people. And this past October, only 12. 12 an 81% reduction. And this drop in new diagnoses wasn't in Africans, and it wasn't in women. It was in men who have sex with men. So why did this happen? Well, there are several reasons for this fall, including the fact that people on effective treatment for HIV are not infectious, so they can't transmit HIV to anybody else. But the most dramatic reason for the fall, in my view, is a pill called PrEP. And men who have sex with men coming to test for HIV in my clinic are taking PrEP. Paula Johnson, in her inspirational TED talk, asked, why leave women's health to chance? But that's what millions of women all over the world have had to do, leave their health to chance. But now they don't have to. So what is PrEP? Well, PrEP is a pill that, when taken with other medicines, is used to treat HIV. But on its own has been shown to prevent HIV, and when taken properly, is close to 100% effective. It's taken every day, like the contraceptive pill, and you can take it when you need to, and stop taking it when you don't. But the one thing you have to do for PrEP to work is take it. Where PrEP hasn't worked, it's because people didn't take it. Behind me is a summary of PrEP studies that have been done all over the world in men and women. It shows that PrEP is most effective when levels of drug are highest in the blood and least effective when they're low or absent. To the left and at the bottom are, four, uh, are some studies in sub-Saharan African women. And as you can see, PrEP wasn't effective in those studies, or as effective in those studies, as it was in the studies higher up on the graph. So why did PrEP work more effectively in some studies of women than in others? Well, remember I said that for PrEP to work, you have to take it. In some of these studies, women didn't really believe that they were at risk of catching HIV, so they didn't take their PrEP. To other women, because PrEP is an HIV medicine, they worried that some people might think that they were already HIV positive, and so that was also a factor. But the thing about taking PrEP is if you're taking it, nobody needs to know. And I'll say it again, no one needs to know. So you ask, does PrEP have side effects? Well, the truth is that less than 10% of people who take PrEP have side effects, and where side effects occur, they usually only last for a few days. The majority of people don't have any side effects at all. But, you say, PrEP is expensive. Surely it, it, can't, it costs too much to be given to everybody. But my answer to that is that it costs more to treat a person for HIV for their whole life than it does to prevent HIV for the small proportion of their life that they might be at risk. And because of this, many countries in the world have started PrEP programs. And many countries in the Western world now provide PrEP for free. 
PrEP isn't widely available in the UK, and so get, uh, men who have sex with men are buying it online via a website called I Want PrEP Now. But actually, the NHS in Scotland is now providing PrEP for free, and the NHS in England is providing it to 10,000 people in a study not to prove that it works, but to see how many people need it. And you can have it too. So for the first time, a woman unable to say, use a condom, to a man she worries has other partners, or indeed a woman who has other partners herself, can take a pill and stop herself from catching HIV. PrEP puts you in control of whether you catch HIV or not. So I call on you to share this. Empower all the women you know. Use PrEP and put the power in your hands. So going back to Margaret, whom I spoke about at the beginning. Why did I think about her when I was noticing the effect of PrEP? Because Margaret left her life to chance. But you don't have to. Before I go, I'd like to leave you with a question. You've seen from my talk how effective PrEP is. And we all know that the burden of HIV is greatest in Africa. So why is it that this wonderful and extremely effective HIV prevention intervention is not available to the people who need it most? Thank you.